In this video, I show the split stem and leaf plot in StatCrunch. So in this StatCrunch spreadsheet, I had typed the ages of my family members in the first column, and I have now added a second column corresponding with the final sale price of items in my friend's Etsy shop. I'm going to create a stem and leaf plot for the final sale price, and you can see I have a total of 24 items here. The minimum price was $34 for the sales price in the Friends Etsy shop, and the maximum value is the sale price of $150. To make a stem and leaf plot, it's not necessary to type your values in order. StatCrunch will automatically order the values in the stem and leaf plot for you. In this case, I happen to type my values in an order. So I'm going to go to Graph, Stem and Leaf. And I'm going to select the final sale price. And again, I'm not going to trim any outliers for now. And then I have to decide on a leaf unit. So I want the ones place to be in the leaf and the tens place to be in the stem. So I choose leaf unit one and we'll hit compute. So you might notice this looks different than the example we saw earlier in the reading. In the example we saw earlier in the reading, the stems had just one row and for the 30s, the stems corresponded to 34, 34, and 35 all in the same row. What StatCrunch has done here is split the stems. Because we have a lot of data, we have uh, want to space out the data in StatCrunch. So we have the 34s, the values between 30 and 34 in the top row, and any values between 35 and 39 in the second row. StackRunch just split the stems for each of the rows. If we want to see how this would look in a histogram, we could make a corresponding histogram. In this case, our bin size is five. So let's go ahead and make a histogram for final sale price. And we will start at 30 and make our bin width of five. And we can see how, if we stretch this out, our histogram looks like a rotated version of our stem and leaf plot. Both of these have a right skew or right tail shape because we've got a few higher values out on the right that are gonna pull the data out in a tail shape on the right side of the graph. We see the peak is right around $70. Right between 60 and 80 seems to be the highest point or the most frequency with our data set. Now, if I had changed my leaf unit, say I wanted to make my leaf unit 10, here our stem and leaf plot now is counting the zeros corresponding to zero hundreds and the ones corresponding to one hundreds. So they've grouped by essentially fifties because we have values from zero to 49 in the first row and 50 to uh, 99 in the second row and then they've rounded the leaves to the nearest 10. So if we go to options edit on our histogram and change our bin width to be 50 and start at zero we would see a similar shape. Sometimes because the stem and leaf plot rounds you have values rounded up into a different bin and so you'll see slight differences between the stem and leaf plot and the histogram. Let's go into options edit on the stem and leaf plot and indicate that we want to trim extreme outliers. So under outlier trimming, you check the bubble for extreme only and hit compute. And there are no identified outliers here when we round it to the nearest 10. Let's check and see if we leave values in the ones place without rounding, if any values are identified as outliers. So we have to scroll down here to the bottom. No values identified as outliers. Let's say, let's trim mild outliers and see if it pulls out that 150 as unusual. And it does, so it pulls out 150 as a potential high value when we say trim mild as well as extreme outliers. The extreme outliers uses the uh, 1.5 times interquartile rule that you'll see in our reading coming up. Uh, the mild trimming, I think they use just a less extreme formula to say it looks like 150 is a high value. When you make stem and leaf plots for me, if you use StatCrunch, you can decide to trim the outliers or 
to not trim outliers. It's up to you as a preference as an artist, as the graph creator or the graph designer. Uh, similarly, if you get a result like this in StatCrunch where the leaves are split, but when you draw the stem plot by hand and you want to put all the leaves together in one row, like all the 60 values together, that's just fine. Again, it's up to you as the artist or designer of the graph. They're all technically correct interpretations. It's just what visual preference you prefer. And again, if we look at a small set of values like the ages of my family members, if we create a stem and leaf plot, for a small set of values, uh, by default, stack crunch will just have uh, single stems. They won't split the stems because I don't have much data here in my family member ages. So when you create the stem plot on paper, it is your personal preference uh, for whether you want to split the stems or not, and then also if you want to identify outliers or not.